Response Transformer plugin in Kong API Gateway deployed in Docker environment in DBLS or declarative mode. That's what we're going to see in this video. Stick with me to find out more. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and welcome to the next video in the Kong API Gateway video series. So right before I start this video, if you haven't watched the previous episodes, I recommend you take a look where you can learn about other cool features that Kong provides in its open source version, things like load balancing, rate limiting, IP restrictions and features like that, which you will actually be required to have a knowledge about and know how to implement in a real world scenario. So with having that in mind, in this video we're going to see how to transform the response that is sent back to the client from the upstream servers, which are actually our backend services. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you can see over here, I am in the official documentation page for the Response Transformer plugin in Kong documentation website. So as we can see over here, this plugin will transform the response sent by the upstream server on the fly before returning the response to the client. So basically things that we can do with this plugin is that we can add additional headers or data to the body we can append them or we can remove some static headers or body data and stuff like that. So going further in this documentation page, we can see the order of the execution of the functions that we can implement with this plugin. So basically this plugin will initially try to remove the things that we declared to this like for example our backend services have some data in their response body and we want to remove them before sending them to the client and actually we do not want to make any changes in our backend services so actually we can do this with configuring the remove section in the kong.yaml file so next the plugin will try to rename the things that we declare next function it'll try to replace and then add and then append the data that we define in the configuration file so actually we're going to implement this in the dbls mode or the declarative mode of kong api gateway so as the basic example we can see over here we can define the plugin's name and the scale that we want this plugin to be applied to and right over here we have the configuration section that we can configure based on the available parameters so i'll move to the configuration reference over here we can see the available parameters that we can pass to this plugin so basically we can define things like the name of the plugin which is a required field so basically we should set this to the response transformer and actually don't mix this plugin with the response transformer dash advanced and actually it has got some advanced configurations that is only available in the paid version so next configurations we have things like the service name or the service id in order to apply this plugin to a specified service and we've got exactly the same configurations for the route and the consumer and also the consumer group so basically the enabled field will actually turn this plugin on and off which is by default set to true and you can set it to false if you want to disable it temporarily so the main thing on the configuration section right over here we've got the exact same functions that we saw in the execution order section so we have the remove rename replace add and append and actually we're going to see some examples in the instance that we're going to set up in a moment as a docker container so i'm going to move to the vs code over here where i've got my docker compose file and the kong.yaml file in my github repository in the kong directory for which you can find the link down in the description section of this video where i put all the files and configurations and any other stuff that i create in my videos so right over here in the docker compose file you can see that i've got two services one i've called the backend service which uses an echo server so basically it will echo whatever request that it receives back to the client so this is just a dummy service that will use to see the behavior of the plugin that we're going to enable shortly and right over here we've got the kong service which uses the kong official image and it has a volume mounted to inside it which is the dot slash 
directory that is located right next to the docker compose file to this exact directory inside the container and which is actually the exact directory that I've defined on the environment variable section to use as the configuration file in the Kong service that will be up and running inside the container. So in this environment variable section we've got other configurations like for example I'm trying to turn off the database, redirect all the logs to the std out and all the error logs to the std error so basically as a result i'll be seeing the output of any logs or errors on the container logs that i can simply access by saying docker logs so we've got some other environment variables that we're not worrying in this video on the port section i've got some ports mapped to the outside especially port 8000 which actually i'll use in order to access the Kong server. So next right over here on the Kong.yaml file I have defined a service and I've called it echo server which is actually a service proxy to the URL of backend which is exactly the same name as I defined in the docker compose file so basically because these two containers will be created by this docker compose file they will actually be sharing the same docker network and actually they can see each other through their service names so basically if you are running your backend services separately from this docker compose file you should actually define your ip address or the domain name for your exact backend service so supposing i am running my backend service on 10.10.100 on port 8000 so basically i should define it with this exact url over here so actually i'm not going to do this and uncomment this so as a result i'll have a proxy to the echo server that will be running also as a docker container so on the route section i've got a path that is slash echo which will then be the exact same path that i'll use to make requests to this service so right over here on the plugins section i've got only one plugin that is the response transformer plugin and because i haven't set any route or service or consumer and any other stuff this is actually going to be enabled globally and will actually apply to any consumer or any service or any other stuff that i define in my configuration file so on the config section you can see that i've got a remove configuration that actually removes the headers with the name x to remove so basically if the echo server sending back the response to the client has any headers with this exact same name actually this plugin will remove it and as a result the client won't see this exact header on the response that it receives also right over here i've got a json configuration which is exactly the configuration that we'll use in order to remove some data from the response body so basically i'm going to actually comment these so we can see in the response body that these two fields exist and later i'll try to uncomment this so we can actually see that the plugin is removing these two fields from the response body so with exact same configurations we can use the add directive in order to add some headers with key value pairs as an array and over here we can use json as we saw in the remove section in order to add some key value pairs to the response body so actually the point is that with defining the json underlying types we actually define the types of the values that the transformer plugin will actually try to cast the values of these key value pairs also quite the same thing for the append directive i've actually used it to append some more headers to the response that will be sent back to the client so I'll hit save and if I move to the terminal let me just make this a little bigger and if I hit ls you can see that I'm in the exact same directory that I've got my docker compose file and config directory so if I hit docker compose up dash d I'm actually expecting my both containers to be created along with a network attaching to those newly created containers so basically as I mentioned before the network will be shared among these two containers and as a result they can see each other through their 
service names. So if I say docker compose ps, I should actually be seeing the op status for both the containers. And right over here, I can see the exact ports that I've mapped to inside the container. And as a result, I'll be actually able to make requests to the Kong server. So right now I'm ready to make requests and actually see the behavior of the response transformer plugin. So in order to make requests, I'll actually go to the browser. I'll try to go to my laptop's IP address on port 8000. And if I hit enter, as a result, I should see an error saying that no route matched with the given values. So if I hit slash echo at the end, I should see the response coming back from the echo server that is also running with the exact same docker compose file. If I go to the inspect on the network tab, I'll hit F5 to make another request. And if I inspect this request over here on the response headers, I can see two H1 headers, H2 headers, and some other headers that I configured in the con configuration file. So if I go back to the configuration file, you can see that these three headers are being appended as we can see right over here. And also the H1 and H2 headers are being set right over here. And on the response body, if I go to the previous section right over here, I can see that I've got the key value pairs that I set on the add section. So I can see the boolean set to false, number set to one to three, and string set to some random string. So these are exactly the same things that I've set on the configuration file. So right over here, we can see we've got the host HTTP request keys that are being returned from the echo server. So like for example, I don't want this host and HTTP keys to exist in the response body that is sent back to the client. So in order to remove them, I'll go back to the configuration over here. I'll try to uncomment these and change the request to HTTP. So basically on the remove section using JSON, I am trying to remove the host and HTTP from the response body that is sent back to the client. So if I go back to the terminal, I'll say docker compose down and docker compose up dash d again and I am expecting my new configurations to be applied with the new container that will be up and running. So I'll hit docker compose logs dash f to follow and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 logs and as a result I can see things looking normal and if I go back to the browser over here I'll try to remove the existing logs and if I hit refresh and again try to inspect this record over here on the previous section I can see that the both host and the HTTP keys are removed from the response body. So that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new in this one. If you like the content, please don't forget to give a like and subscribe to my channel. And also I'll link the URL for the full playlist dedicated to Kong API Gateway. You can find in the description section of this video. So don't forget to give a visit. So as always, if you have any questions, any recommendations, you can ask me in the comment section down below. And with that, that's all for this video and I hope to see you in the next videos.